Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is the seventh day of the Leap Code Daily Challenge of the Year, or the sixth day. Oh, no, let me not look at this. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's problem. Let me just see if there are any bonus coins. Nope. Uh, yeah, um, today's problem is gas station, so let's take a look. Um, and I am doing this a little bit earlier in my night, so I am going to do a bonus problem. So definitely hit the bell or alert or whatever, and then we'll do one more problem together if you feel like this was too easy for you. Um, and there will be one problem that I haven't seen before. You know, I don't remember most problems, but you know, who knows, right? Inside the subconscious, who knows how those things work. All right, let's take a look. Today's problem is... 134 gas station. So the end gas stations on a circular route where the amount of gas is gas of I. You have an unlimited gas tank and cost cost of cost of I to travel from the I station to the next station. You begin to join from empty tank and one with gas stations. Given two integers of weight, gas and cost, return the starting gas stations index if you can travel around the circuit once in a clockwise direction. Otherwise return negative one. Otherwise, okay. Oh, it's guaranteed to be unique. Okay. I was going to be like, huh, can you just do it from everybody? But yeah. Okay. Um, what, what, I, uh, what is, does that mean? So basically, gas means that it costs, oh no. Wait, what is, oh, that's basically how much you get, and then it costs that much um, to get to the next one. So in theory, okay, so station three, index three, you fill up with oh, this one, index 3. Eh, zero index is always weird when they say it like that. But uh, yeah, so you start at 4, you use 1, and then you go 5, and then you to do 2. Okay, I think I got it now. So the first thing to do is, that we can do with a circular thing, for this particular case, we only need to go, um, we only need to so go around once. So what that means is that and in this case, there are constraints that they tell you, for example, that it's guaranteed to be unique and so forth. So you can, uh, one kind of, um, I don't know if it's called, I don't know if it's a hack, but the way that I do it is basically double the array, right? Um, and the reason why you do that is that you can think about something like this array. Um, you can think about wrapping around once just as you think about like for example you want to go from three all the way back to one you could also just think about it this way instead of doing physically manually running around and it'll make the math slightly easier maybe i don't know usually it does uh, make the coding a little bit easier otherwise we wouldn't do it so okay so let's see so let's just say the current is equal to zero start is equal to negative uh, i mean it doesn't really matter right also zero and then now we say n is equal to length of gas. Uh, and then now for for i in range of n, we have g c maybe is equal to gas sub i, cos sub i. We probably could have done it with a uh, enumerate. Okay, fine. Let's do it with a enumer enumerate. Uh, so we have something like that, right? And then basically. Currently, we we fill up, right? Or I guess it's G. We fill up, and then we it takes us a uh, cost to go to the next one, right? And then now, if current is less than zero, that means that well, I just want to make sure I'm all, off by one case. So that's what I'm reading on. Um, basically, for example, you fill up at 4, then you use 1, and then you fill up at 5. Mm, I mean, that's roughly right, maybe. Maybe I'm off by 1. Let, let's see. Um, so if current is equal to 0, then that means that the current one ended, and we need to start off a new one, right? Yeah. Hmm. And then here we say start is equal to i, maybe, or i plus 1, maybe, I don't know. Else, if, else then we just continue, but we also want to do a check where if 
i minus start is greater than or you go to n uh, this has to be the original n i suppose then we can return i or we can, we can return start then we return negative one afterwards i think this is roughly right but i feel like i'm off by something because basically you try to start at one it, it fails immediately and then try to start the second one it fails immediately and then start that third one also fails immediately then four um why isn't that working so four one five two 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 two, two. Right, let's just print it out hmm Okay. Oh, uh, I am dumb. I, I forgot to reset it to zero. I was wondering why. Um, almost like the other thing. Okay. Hmm. Been making a lot of silly mistakes lately, but this one's okay. All right. So let's give it a. Hmm. I'm trying to think. Of, so I mean, I think the the hardest part for me to explain this particular part is the one where, um, can you get to? Well, no, no. no okay. So this is why this is up, uh, good in the sense that like, you know, one question that you might have is like, well, if you get to zero or if you get to negative at some point, what if, you, you know, let's say, you know, let's say you have five elements, A, B, C, D, E or whatever. Let's say you got to negative here, right? Or yeah, let's say you got to negative here the, um, and you begin this segment, you know, from A, B, C, D, C say right um why do we reset at d and not at you know maybe b right so that may be one thing that you may ask but the the thing is that we know that because the pre um the precondition or the invariant of this thing is that going into c it was positive right or zero so that means that going into c um it has a greater like it has a positive impact right meaning that okay with if the and you know we we don't even have to I mean I know that we're talking about adding and then subtracting so you can think about it as a delta away but that means that if a plus b is going to be greater than zero um, let's take a, a a really you know obvious case where a plus b b is equal to a billion right so if it goes to a billion it adds to the negative value of c and then goes to negative zero that means that even if you take away the contribution of a which by default also is going to be greater than zero, B plus C is also going to be less than zero, right? So th that's why you're able to kind of reset it and set it at zero starting from D now going forward because we know that C is a really negative impact on the answer. Um, okay, I think now I believe that and then now I can maybe submit and hopefully I, I don't make a silly mistake. Sweet. Uh, 10, 12 streak. Um, yeah. That's pretty much it. This is going to be linear time, linear space. Hope I don't have to explain it that much. Uh, why? Um, the linear space, well, it's linear time and linear space because we doubled the space uh, the way that I did it here. But of course, if you are very careful, you can do this in all one space. Basically the same idea, but, you know, uh, uh, but a little bit more careful, like, yeah, I mean, yeah, you could just set like G is, for example, you can maybe just do like uh, GC is equal to uh, gas of I dot N or something like that, right? And then, of course, you have to run the fold up twice or something. But anyway, so you could get this in constant uh, space. But yeah, that's all I have for this one. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you think. Stay good, stay healthy, do good mental health. Have a great weekend, everybody. I'll see you soon and take care. Bye-bye.